questions before we get started. So today we'll do some class exercises on chapter nine. Chapter nine is kind of a short chapter, so these problems aren't too difficult. There's only five of them. It'll probably be a short class. Yeah. All right. So the first two problems are on the board. Start with the first one. A company's net income before interest expenses income taxes in 2014 and 15 is 487.5 and $427,000 respectively. Its fixed interest expense was 125,000 in both years. Calculate the company's time times interest earned ratio for each of the two years, yeah? So give you two years, they want to know times interest earned for each of the two years. Oh, that shouldn't take you too long. Take two or three minutes, crank that out, we'll go over it. If you don't remember the formula, you can always look in your notes or your PowerPoints. All right, what do you have for times interest earned for the first year? Anybody? Times interest earned first year. 3.9. 3.9. <laughs> 3.9. You got 487.5 divided by 1.5, about equals 3.9 times. Yeah? Year two? 3.416. Okay. 3.41, about, yeah. So you got four, what's it, 427? 427, 123 divided by 125,000 is about equal to 3.4 times. Yeah? Pretty simple. Questions. Number two. On November the 1st, Casey's Snowboards signed a $12,000 90-day 5% note payable to cover its past due account. In other words, Casey had a $12,000 account payable. They couldn't pay it. So they gave up a note instead, yeah? 12,000, 90 day, 5% note. Start with B. They put these questions in a bad one. Start with B, all right? What's the journal entry to record the issuance of the note? On 11-1. What am I going to debit? What am I going to credit? I issued a note payable to satisfy an account payable. What am I going to debit? What am I going to credit? Debit account payable. Say again. Debit account payable. Debit account payable. That's correct. Credit. Notes payable. Note payable. 
Yeah? Usually when you pay an account payable, you debit account payable, credit cash. Well, they couldn't pay cash, so instead they gave up a note payable, yeah? All right, so look at C and A. C and A are the same, essentially. Prepare the journal entry at the year end, 1231. Okay, prepare the journal entry. You basically are saying, how much interest expense is owed at year end? So they want you to do the journal entry to record the expense obligation at year end. All right, well, let's walk before we run. How much interest do we owe at 1231? Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Twelve thousand times point oh nine times sixty days out of three sixty or one six sixty is two months, November, December, sixty days over three sixty or one sixth of a year. Yeah? So what am I gonna debit? What, what account am I gonna debit? What account am I going to credit? Interest expense. Debit or credit? Debit. Interest expense. $100. What am I going to credit? Interest payable. Interest payable. We owe $100 of interest payable. Don't have to pay it until February 1st. So D says, all right, let's assume we pay everything that we owe on February 1st, which is the due date. Okay? So prepare the entry to record everything we owe on the due date. Let's walk before we run. What is the total amount that we owe on December the 1st? I'm sorry, I meant to say February 1st. What is the total amount that we owe on February the 1st? When we're going to repay the note, everything we owe, how much are we going to write a check for? $12,150. dollars $12,150. So we're going to write a check for $12,150. $150, $150 is the total interest we owe. It's $12,000 still times 06. But now it's uh, three months over 12 or one quarter. Yeah? All right. I need some debits. What am I going to debit? Interest what? How much? No, no, not 150. How much? 50. That's right. Okay. Say it like you mean it. $50, which represents the interest expense for the month of January. Yeah? What other accounts am I going to debit? Take the easy one. Notes payable? No payable to me, that's the easy one. All right. Need one more. I got rid of what? Interest payable. Interest payable. I'm not only paying off the note, I'm paying off the interest that I owe. Again, I've got total interest of 150. That went into year number one. That went in year number two. Very similar to what we did in notes receivable, yeah? We're just on the other side. On notes receivable, we recorded a transaction. This is the other side of the, other side of the coin. This is what the guy who owed the money wrote, yeah? Recorded, I guess I should say. 
questions? So here's an easy one. Calculate the total amount of FICA withholding for an employee whose pay is $2,400 for the first pay period of the year. The tax rates are 6.2% for Social Security, 1.45% for Medicare. Can I erase this? Calculate the total amount of FICA withholding for an employee whose pay is $2,400 for the first pay period of the year. FICA Social Security is 6.2. FICA Medicare is 1.45%. So how much total FICA would you withhold from this employee? Anybody got a number? One eighty three point six. One eighty three sixty, yes. All right. So we got 2400 times 0.062, that equals 148.80. Now we got 2400 times 0.0145, that equals 34.80. So the total Social Security that we're going to withheld from this particular person, that's a lot. 183.60, yeah? I softened you up with an easy one, yeah? Questions? So now, Santa Barbara Express has four employees. Each employee earns 5000 per month and is paid on the last day of the month. Each employee's wages are subject to FICA Social Security of 6.2%, Medicare of 1.45%. Each employee is going to have 16% withheld for federal income tax, and they're going to have $110 each withheld for insurance premiums. All right? A, prepare the payroll entry, the total payroll entry. You're the company, you got these four employees. I think it says here it was the month of January. Yeah, it's the month of January, so it's the first month of the year. You got four employees, you get 5,000 a month. Give me the journal entry to record the total payroll. You have a company called Santa Barbara Express. That's your company. You've got four employees. You got to pay them on January the 31st. And after you pay them, you got to record the journal entry, yeah? We're going to record two entries. First entry is record the payroll entry.
All right, so who's going to start me off? What's my salary expense for the period? What's my payroll salary expense for the period for the month of January? You got four employees. What's your salary expense for the month of January? Twenty thousand. Four employees, they get five thousand each. Yeah? Now it says we're gonna withhold six point two percent for social security. It's going to be Social Security payable or FICA Social Security. Maybe I should write FICA. How much? How much Social Security taxes are we going to withhold from these four employees? $1,000. $1,000. Two hundred and forty, which is twenty thousand times point oh six two. How much are we going to withhold for Medicare? Two hundred and ninety, which is twenty thousand times point oh one four five. I think the next one's federal income taxes. How much are we going to hold for, I'm sorry, withhold for federal income taxes? 440. That's insurance. That's the next one. 3,200. 3,200. You had the right number, just the wrong thing. 20,000 times 0.6. Now I got insurance premiums payable. How much? Set it for 440. 440, which is $110 per employee times four employees. I guess we can give them some cash. How much cash are we going to give them? Fourteen thousand eight hundred thirty. Yeah, that's your payroll entry. Now we have to do the B. The employer's payroll taxes include the FICA taxes, also federal unemployment taxes. Up, that's not six percent. That's six tenths of one percent. 0.006 of the first 7,000 paid each employee, and state unemployment taxes of 4% on the first 7,000 paid each employee. Prepare the journal entry to record the payroll taxes at January 31st, and assume none of the employees has reached the limit of 7,000, which they haven't. This is the first month. They get paid 5,000 a month, so they've only been paid $5,000 so far yeah all right so take the first one first all right i gotta do my employee i'm sorry employer match for my fica so how much fica tax as the employer do i need fica social security how much fica social security tax do i need to pay as the employer 1240, same number right there. So this is additional FICA, Oops. Social Security. All right, what about my FICA, additional FICA, Medicare? How much? 
290. All right, now I have federal unemployment. They say taxes, I say insurance, but we'll say P for tax, because that's what they did. All right, how much federal unemployment tax do I need to pay? And that's not 6%, that's 6 tenths of 1%. How much federal unemployment tax do I need to pay? 120. 120. 20,000 times 0 .006. Six tenths, not six percent. Then I have one other one here called state unemployment. I call it insurance. They call it tax. All right. How much state unemployment tax? Do I need to pay? Eight hundred. which is 20,000 times the 0.04. So all together, my payroll taxes are going to equal all of these, you add them all up, 2450. Again, the takeaway is when you record the payroll, you have two entries. The payroll entry itself, how much we're paying dividends and how much we're withholding. Then the associate, the second entry for the associated employment taxes that we have to pay for the benefit of employing these four people. Yeah? Questions? Last but not least. A company sells its product subject to a warranty that covers cost of parts for repairs during the first six months after the date of sales. Warranty costs are estimated to be 5% of sales. During the month of July, the company performed warranty work and used $11,000 of parts to perform the work. Sales for July for $450,000. The first question, or the first thing that they ask you to do is prepare the entry to record the warranty expense for the month of July. So given that fact pattern, they want to know the warranty expense for the month of July. Well, first of all, how much are we talking about? Anybody? 22,500. which is 450,000 times the 5%. Yeah? So we know the numbers. What account are we going to debit? What account are we going to credit? Debit warranty expense. Debit warranty expense, that's kind of given. Okay. 
and I'm going to credit estimated warranty liability. Estimated warranty. I'm going to abbreviate liability. Yeah. The estimated warranty liability cap is a lot like your accumu I'm sorry, your allowance for doubtful accounts. This is an allowance for doubtful receivables. It's allowance for doubtful parts. Yeah, that's what it is. No, letter number two says, of course, it's got a typo. Record the cost of the warranty work completed in. It should be July. All right. It says we did $11,000 worth of warranty work in July. They want you to record that entry. They say June, they mean July. All right. Well, we know it's $11,000. All right. What am I going to debit? What am I going to credit? Which account am I going to debit? Which account am I going to credit? Take a stab at it. We set up an estimated liability. All of a sudden, here comes somebody, and they got to get eleven thousand dollars worth of parts. What account are we going to debit? What account are we going to credit? Yeah, estimated warranty. Liability. Estimated liability. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> estimated warranty. Oops, I guess I should put it up a little higher. Right. Estimated warranty liability. What am I going to credit? Parts, parts inventory, that's exactly right. C says, here's my estimated warranty liability account. Starts off with $10,000. What's my ending balance? Here's a T account. Here's a couple of journal entries. After we write a journal entry, what do we do? What? Put it in the chart. Are you put it in the chart? I I I I pause. I it's not you. I just can't hear you. Uh, you just put it in the chart. And you post is the word he's looking for. You post. All right, so as I post these entries, what's my ending liability, in, what's my ending balance in the estimated warranty liability account? We'll post the two entries and tell me what you get. $21,500. I'm gonna post this credit, 22.5. I'm going to post this debit, 11000 My ending balance, twenty-one five. Questions? Chapter 9 was kind of an easy chapter. It really was. Okay. And this, for change, actually covers all the material in the chapter, including the formula. We've never done that before. All right? So, a couple of things. Over for this chapter due next Saturday. Next week we'll do chapter 10. Now, if you haven't got together with your group members, you ought to do that. Make contact with your group members, select your company, and shoot me the name of your company. Yeah? I think I've heard from maybe one or two of them. Yes? First in time, first in right. Next week, chapter 10. See you then.
Is anybody in group A? Yeah. 